The box and cartridge for D-Block have a hyphen in the title, but the title screen here doesn't. Just another example of how 8-bit video game naming conventions were not the place you wanted to look for consistency. Well, I hope you're satisfied with a short video, since D-Block is a game that's very simple and there's really nothing to it. It's a puzzle game that's very much in the mold of Tetris. Instead of trying to complete lines, you're trying to complete rings. You're controlling the flashing square in the middle of the screen, and clumps of bricks will fly out from the side, crossing the screen. If they strike your brick, then they stick to it, and of course they stick to any bricks that are stuck to your brick. You can just let a brick fly past you if you like, but if you do that three times in a row, then you lose. The other way that you lose is if a brick spawns in at the edge of the screen, and it immediately collides with a brick stuck to you. Completing a ring will erase it, along with any bricks within that ring, and then any bricks outside of the ring will get sucked into the center, often deleting bricks as they go. You can hit A and B to rotate your whole pile of bricks around you, but you do have to have room to do that rotation, and so as the pile grows, you might find yourself unable to rotate at certain times. D-Block offers two game modes, just like Tetris. Type A is just a score attack. You play for as long as you can. While in Type B, your goal is to clear 25 lines, and then the game resets for the next level where bricks move faster. As you might expect, the larger the ring that you complete, the more points you get. But the points aren't really scaling according to the effort it requires to complete the larger rings. Geometrically, for every layer of ring, the number of squares you have to use to complete it increases by 8. So the first ring is 8, then the second ring takes 16, then 24, 32, and so on. The number of squares in each brick varies between 1 and 4, though for the Tetronimos, it's only L pieces and squares. So in order to complete the second ring, you have to place twice as many blocks as you would for the first ring, and it keeps growing like that. The score increases just don't keep up, and by the time you're past the third ring, your shape is so unwieldy that you're going to have a hard time completing it without going bust. On top of that, it is way more valuable in terms of score to completely clear all of the squares away than it is to complete larger rings. You get a few thousand additional points for a larger ring, you get 50,000 points for not having any squares. And it's a lot easier to do that when you're only working on that inside ring. At four rings, it's virtually impossible to complete the corners with the pieces that fly out. So once you reach that point, the game is actually over. I found it hard to get a feel for the placement of bricks in D-Block. Because the whole stack rotates, and it's possible to collide with the moving bricks from any direction, you've got a lot of options for placement, but you also have to be careful about it. Especially when the bricks are moving fast, doing precise maneuvers becomes kind of tricky. D-Block is not a well-regarded game in Japan. In fact, the only thing it seems to be known for is that it's been getting kind of hard to find a copy. Though you'll only pay about 4,000 yen right now if you do find one. I gotta say, D-Block is not a very interesting game. It's one of many games from that era that decided to copy Tetris and just give it a very small twist. They even have three musical options for you. And the geometry of making rings in D-Block just isn't that interesting. They didn't even bother to balance the scoring system well. D-Block is one of the more mediocre Tetris-inspired games. And it's just not very interesting at all.